This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about what's actually happening with GameStop, with GME. We're seeing a massive move up higher today, even higher than what happened on Friday. If you're interested in learning trading strategies like this that work in the current market, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I like this tweet from Senator Eloise Williams, GameStop launches an electrical vehicle company that runs on Bitcoin and cures COVID. Obviously a joke. This isn't why GME is rallying. The real trigger for this was the announcement that the Chewy co-founder was, one of the Chewy co-founders was joining GameStop's board. This was a couple days ago. Obviously people got excited because he has a lot of experience in um, in e-commerce, etc., and would be able to help this company really transition a bit more to the digital market. So this was maybe the catalyst or the trigger. But what's really been happening is two parallel phenomenon. One of them, a lot of you may not be aware of. So I want to talk about both of them. The first one, we're, the, the first thing we're really seeing is a massive short squeeze. When you have a stock that's heavily shorted, where people are betting that the stock's the stock's going to go down and the stock instead moves up a lot. You have a lot of people who need to buy shares to quote unquote cover their short. So we have a short squeeze going that's a result of very high short interest. We're going to talk about how high that short interest really is. In addition, we're having something that's called, often called a convexity squeeze. This is options terminology. And this is what happens when a stock moves up a lot and there are also a lot of call option buyers involved. And what happens is you have you have this hedging feedback loop that, that occurs where market makers need to stay delta neutral and gamma neutral. We're going to talk about that in a second, but let's first talk about the short squeeze that is happening. So the total shares outstanding, if you think of the ownership of GameStop as like a pie, how many, how many slices does this pie have? It has 69.75 million. If you bought up all these shares, you would own 100% of the company. Now, not all of those shares are freely traded. The, the number of freely traded shares is a small fraction of that. Uh, well, not a small fraction, but a fraction of that, 46, 47 million. These are shares that are locked up, that are held by institutions, and that are not... Uh, so the, the, float, the number of float shares are actively traded. This is what you can buy and sell. But there's, there's another, uh, an additional, call it 20 million shares that are locked up and held by insiders and they don't trade freely. They're not part of the float. So float is much smaller here than the shares outstanding. The float is always going to be less than or equal to the shares outstanding. Now we have something even more interesting, which is that if you look at the number of shares sold short, this is uh, somewhat, this is always delayed data. It's delayed by a couple of weeks. But as of the end of 2020, there were 71 million shares sold short. Now, this is more than 100% of the total shares outstanding. And this is something that uh, you, you don't see quite, you don't see that often. But basically, when you want to, sh when you want to short a stock, the uh, your broker can essentially give you uh, what we would call synthetic shares. So to, to short a stock, you first borrow the shares and then you sell them on the open market. And you can actually have a company, as we see with GameStop today, where there are more shares shorted than are actually issued. This is very weird, but this does sometimes happen because you can sort of synthetically borrow the shares. Now, 71 million is a huge percentage uh, it's obviously, as we said, more than the total shares outstanding. It's it's 102 percent of the total shares outstanding, and it's also uh, 260 percent of the float. So if the float's only 46, 47 million, the shares sold short are another uh, call it 25 million shares. So this is this is. Uh, this is like having a very dry forest where all it takes is a cigarette or a match to set the whole forest on fire. What happened was this turned out to be the catalyst. And then we also had a lot of interest in this name from, uh, from various Reddit groups as well. And so a lot of retail traders buying calls on this. So we're going to move to that next. 
Uh, what I would say is that this is currently a very dangerous stock to be holding. This will reverse. We're going to talk about how it will reverse. If I were the CEO of GameStop, what I would be trying to do as quickly as possible is to sell more stock at these prices, basically issue more shares of stock. And, basic, and that's a way of essentially converting your overpriced stock into cash, and then you can use that cash to put, to put cash in the uh, treasury coffers or to pay off, uh, pay off some of the company's debt. If you're finding this video helpful, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe and like button. So we've talked about the short squeeze. When a lot of people are short of stock, in this case, it's mostly institutional investors. There are a number of, of large hedge funds that have gotten caught on the wrong side of this trade. And they are gradually, if, if you think about it, if you're just short a stock with a, let's call it a 5% position, and the stock doubles, you're now short with a 10% uh, position. So the problem with shorts is as they go against you, the position grows. And the only way to get out of this really is to buy back those shares. As you buy back those shares, it creates more and more buying pressure, which drives the stock higher. Now, it doesn't help as well that the stock keeps getting halted. We have these trading halts. There were, I believe, two on Friday where the stock stopped trading and then reopened. Obviously, the stock was halted uh, because stocks don't trade over the weekend. So you had a lot of pent-up demand and uh, the fire continues uh, the fire continues to rage. So that's the short squeeze. That's where you have to have uh, uh, the shorts come in and try to buy back their shares. And there's a point at which they just have to do it. If you shorted the stock at 20 and it goes to 100, you've lost uh, 5x or 4 or 5x on that position. And if you sized it more than 1% or 5%, you're really uh, in big trouble. So the way convexity squeeze works, this is separate from a short squeeze. Uh, this is more on the option side of stuff. This only applies to stocks that have actively traded options as GME does. Let's say that uh, GME is trading at 30 as it was uh, on, on Thursday or Friday last week. And let's say that a Robinhood trader, someone who's been reading uh, Wall Street Bets or one of these Reddit forums or stock twits or something decides to uh, buy an out of the money call. So the strike price, a 60 strike price call that expires in uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, maybe or maybe a February call. We're, we're actually past uh, options expiration for January. Well, let's say he or she buys a 60 strike call out of the money. In order to buy that, you have to have a market maker sell it to you. These market makers, they're basically robots at this point. They sit, a, they sit on the bid and the ask, and they try to benefit from the bid ask spread on these options. And they have to do that in such a way that they also hedge their risk. So if the market maker sells this retail trader a call, that market maker is now short one call. I'm, I'm simplifying this. In, process, in, in, in practice, these market makers will have large books of option positions that include index options, individual stock options, and possibly futures as well to hedge the index options. And they'll be trading this whole book we're just looking at a tiny piece of the book here. And obviously, if they can offset order flow, if you have a number of people selling calls, buying puts, they're able to offset this. But if you have a huge flood of retail traders and also hedge fund traders who smell blood like sharks in the water who are buying calls, this is what happens. The market maker has to create a new, a new call, ex nihilo, out of nothing, sell that call to the retail trader. The market maker is now short one call and so he has to hedge himself by buying shares of the underlying stock. This is called delta hedging, and I do talk about it in my courses. So if the, if the call option is deep out of the money, in other words, the strike price is 60, the stock's just at 30, this is where it was last, last week, he only has to buy a fraction. Each, each call option is equivalent to 100 shares, but if, it's, if the call option is well out of the money, has low delta. In this case, we're going to assume the delta was about 0.1. This is a, a 10 delta call option, deep out of the money option. To hedge this, you, you only need to buy about 10 shares of stock. So a tenth of the total amount of 100 shares per one call option contract. So this is the trade. The retail trader gets long one call, the market maker short one call, and he hedges his call by buying 10 shares of stock. Now, the market maker needs to stay delta neutral throughout the whole time. He's just trying to benefit from bid-ask spreads. 
maybe playing volatility a little bit, but he doesn't he doesn't have any view on GameStop. He's just trying to make a market in the options. That's why he's called a market maker. He wants to stay delta neutral. So how do you stay delta neutral? Well, if the stock moves up, you actually need to buy more shares as a call option market maker. So let's say the stock moves to 60. Uh, call options that are at the money usually have a delta of about 0.5. You can also see this as the probability of an option expiring in the money. Under a normal distribution, a, an at the money call option has a 50% chance of expiring in the money. And so the delta of, this, of these, these 60 call options have moved from 0.1 when we all first enter the trade to 0.5. And so if the market maker wants to stay delta neutral, and he does need to stay delta neutral if he doesn't want to lose money, as the stock moves from 30 to 60, the market maker is going to have to delta hedge the whole way. And what that will involve is buying more shares of stock. And so if the delta moves from 0.1 to 0.5, the market maker is going to need to buy, go from 40 from 10 shares up to 50 shares. So the market maker is going to need to buy another 40 shares as the stock moves up from 30 to 60. The higher the stock goes, as we said, the more shares of stock that the market maker needs to buy. Now, what this does is it squeezes the shorts. It squeezes other people who are short calls or long puts as well. So you have this simultaneous thing happening where you're having a short squeeze and a convexity squeeze as the market makers do their delta hedging. And what makes it more difficult is he needs to do this as the stock is if a stock moves up a certain amount, they're, they're various circuit breakers and the stock, uh, they're, they're trading halts or they can be trading, a stock can be halted if the exchange feels there's some funny business going on. Um, and so if you think the stock's about to get halted and if it does get halted, it might gap up even more when it reopens, you need to maybe delta hedge a little bit ahead of time. So all of this is just adding tinder to the fire and the combination of convexity squeeze and a short squeeze can really go on. Uh, it's, it's hard to predict how long something like this can go on. One way of trading it is you, you look for candidates like this. I try to do this with my momentum stocks. You look for candidates that are in a trading range and then that break out of that trading range. Uh, and the key to these sort of trades is you don't want to hang on too long. Uh, if I were long, this is a trade I actually missed. A um, number of people told me about it, and I was too busy focused on Bitcoin to look at it. But this is this is the point where you want to you want to get the heck out as quickly as possible because what will happen is eventually this process will reverse, and as the stock begins to fall, market makers will can they, they, these option market makers they're continuously delta delta hedging, they're buying and selling shares. As the stock begins to fall, their delta will go down, and they won't need to own as many shares to hedge their short call position. And so the more the stock falls, the more these market makers will sell their stock. So they buy more as the stock goes up, they sell more as the stock goes down. And this tends to exacerbate whatever is happening in terms of a short squeeze on the upside, as well as downward selling pressure on the downside. So this there's a tendency this could reverse very sharply. We've seen similar things happen over the past few weeks well, the, the great example really was Tesla uh, in terms of why it melted up. That turned out to have more fundamentals behind it than, uh, than I think GameStop does. Though for a while last year, what we were experiencing last year and early this year really was a, a massive short squeeze as well, driven by fundamentals, but also uh, a convexity squeeze. Now, one thing that made this convexity squeeze more severe with GameStop is that as of last week, and I'm pretty sure of this, uh, I didn't, I did not notice these higher strikes. So the highest strike on the call options, I'm looking at the January 25th, um, the weekly call options. The highest strike available in the calls was 60. So normally market makers, if they're higher strikes, in addition to delta hedging by buying the stock, they can also do fancy things by buying out of the money calls and capping capping their losses in that way. But if the number of call options, the, the call strikes ends. So as of la late last week, I'm almost certain there were no strikes above 60. These have been added, I believe just, just this morning, they've added these higher strikes. You can see that they're relatively recent. The, um, the open interest is much lower on these 
than, uh, than for example, 60, which was really the top of the call options in terms of strikes. And so I'm gonna be keeping an eye out going forward for situations like this, where there's a lot of retail interest, there's a huge short interest, uh, there are retail call buyers, there's some sort of catalyst, and there's a capped uh, strike price. I think this could be a very interesting thing to continue to play. We're in a very bubbly environment. And so as a result, I'm gonna to try to add some of these plays. I'll, I'll talk about some of them on YouTube. I'm also gonna to try to add them to my momentum stocks list, which is available to Trader University, Trader University premium subscribers. If you want to get access to this, you can subscribe to Trader University Premium. And in doing so, you'll also get access to all of my courses, including learn to trade options like a pro. So if a lot of this went over your head in terms of delta, delta and gamma and delta hedging and call options and even talking about expirations and strikes, etc., and you want to learn how to trade options and get a feel for them, this is the best way to go from A to Z. I start off with very basic options concepts and then I get into very I cover all the Greeks and then I start uh, I cover all the basic option strategies long and short calls long and short puts synthetic uh, synthetic positions synthetic long stock synthetic short stock I talk about covered calls and then I get into option spreads and fancier things uh, bear put spreads bull put spreads uh, and and uh, straddles strangles butterflies so everything that really covers options. If you work through this course, you'll have a much better intuitive feel for what uh, convexity squeeze involves and what's happening when you understand how all the Greeks work together. The good thing about joining Trader University Premium is you get access to the list of my favorite momentum stocks and you get access to that options trading course in addition to 14 other courses. Momentum stocks, a trading course, a day trading course, uh, how to make money with IPOs, uh, futures trading, swing trading with options, etc. You get access to everything for uh, for 30 days. Now, normally, full access to everything on the website is just uh, just $125 for 30 days access. But because you've listened this far, I want to give you a special coupon code. So if you click on the link in the description notes below, it will take you to this page. You can see the list of courses. You can click on any of these boxes, and it'll give you access to you can see what the curriculum is, what the list of lectures. If this is something that interests you, you can just scroll, go back to uh, uh, the join link, go all the way to the bottom and click get it now. That will take you to this checkout page and I do have a coupon code for you. If you click have a coupon code and then you type in YT99, click update, that will take off $26. So instead of $125 for 30 days access, you'll get access to everything for just $99. You can watch all the courses. You can copy my momentum stocks list and cancel before your subscription renews. There are no long-term contracts or anything like that. But if you do decide to stick around, I'm constantly updating the momentum stocks list. And I'm also uh, adding new courses as well. This this uh, convexity, uh, the convexity delta hedging, these convexity squeezes, these short squeezes, and the entrance of all these new retail traders buying call options actually creates some interesting opportunities. So I'm gonna see if I can create a course on this as well so that we can uh, play along with some of these short squeezes and convexity squeezes. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.